going on everybody today i've got an absolute banger of a tactic for you guys and we're going to go about things a little bit differently going forward with these tactic videos i want them to be more in depth more analytical and where all you can really and truly understand what this tactic is doing for you so that you understand what the players should be able to do and what they are not able to do so if you guys happen to enjoy today's video please feel free to leave a like comment and subscribe comment down below what formations you want to see in the future i will make sure to get to them but without further ado let's get into the video so today we have the 5-2-1-2 boomerang that's right we're getting right into the tactic no statistics yet whatsoever so we have Two advanced forwards on attack up top with an advanced playmaker on attack behind them. Two segundo volantes in defensive midfield. Two wing backs on attack. Three central defenders. Two of them on defend. One on cover. And a sweep keeper on support. Now both advanced forwards on attack have shoot more often and tackle harder. The advanced playmaker on attack has crosses aimed at center, move into channels, and tackle harder. Both segundo volantes on support have moved into channels and tackle harder. Both wingbacks on attack have crosses aimed at center, shoot more often, and tackle harder. Both central defenders on defend have stay wider and tackle harder. The central defender on cover has tackle harder, and the sweep keeper on support was left as is. Now this is played with a positive mentality. You can also go with a balanced or attacking. If you are not a team like Inter Milan, Real Madrid, and Manchester City, definitely probably try and go balanced so that you're kind of getting the best out of your side. But if you are one of those upper echelon teams, which this tactic is very good for those upper echelon teams, feel free, go positive, go attacking. Or if you're one of those lower table sides, you need some points, try and nick a goal late, go attacking for sure. Now when we're in possession, we have wide attacking width, we overlap on the left and the right and play out from the defense, we work the ball into the box, whipped crosses in the final third, slightly shorter passing directness, slightly higher tempo. When in transition, we counter press, distribute quickly to the center backs. Once out of possession, we have a high press line of engagement, standard defensive line, more often trigger press, and we trap to the outside. So like I said, these tactic videos are going to start being a little bit different, more in depth, more analytical so that all you understand how exactly this works and how you're going to be able to improve your side to exactly match and get the most out of these tactics. So today we're utilizing one of my favorite tools to kind of plan out how I'm going to go about my tactics and that is tacticalboard.com. Not a sponsorship, but I highly recommend using tacticalboard.com because it will really allow you to kind of, you know, plan out what tactics you want to do, understand what your players are going to be doing in it, wh what space they're going to occupy, etc., etc. So as you can see, we're lined up here in the 5-2-1-2. And what I want to go over immediately is the three center backs in the back. So obviously, the Vrij, the Serbi, both stay wider. So they're going to be out here when we are in possession. But something that not a lot of people are going to realize, and it's something that Pep Guardiola is utilizing in real life, is due to us having a sweeper keeper, they are going to step up a little bit more. If they're on attack, they're obviously going to be the highest that they can be. If they're on support, kind of in between where it would be on defend and attack. So when a Serbi is out here, Devridge is out here, Bastoni is going to slightly move to the right, and Somer is going to be right about here. So everyone is going to be able to move the ball out of the back, and that is exactly what we want. We are building from the back. But once we have built out of the back, where does everything go from there? Well, we really want to utilize our Segundo Volantes big time because Nico Barella is absolutely fantastic. And if you remember, one of the instructions that I had on the Segundo Volantes was move into channels, which under player traits, Nico Barella moves into channels. So that fits perfectly. Play to your player's strengths and you're going to perform much better. Don't try and get them to do something that they are not comfortable doing or that there's no way that they could possibly do. Now, even though Aslani doesn't have move into channels, he is still going to be able to do exactly that. But something that will help us, being that he's a Segundo Volante, is that he likes to dictate the tempo. And being that they are kind of like the ultimate deep line playmaker there in that defensive midfield role, that's really going to help us. Now, even though I just said they're kind of like that ultimate deep line playmaker, the deep line playmaker, even when in attack, doesn't really like to go any further than right here. But a Segundo Volante 
will go all the way up to the edge of the box or sometimes even into the box. So you will be able to get some goals from your volantes. And then a reason why I went for them over the defensive midfielder is because the Segunda Volante won. Very overpowered this year in FM23, probably going to be overpowered in FM24 as well. But they offer so, so much. And the defensive midfielder, you can get to kind of do whatever you want. You can basically make them into a box-to-box midfielder, which is kind of what the Volante does, but they have a big-time playmaking aspect to them. So it's kind of, like I've said, the ultimate deep-line playmaker to where they aren't just going to hang out around here where Hakan's original position is they will be able to get up to the edge of the box. They'll be able to get into the box and create more chances for you. Now, being that we have our only width coming from our wing backs, it is going to be vital that they are contributors. And I couldn't think of two better players than Quadrado and DeMarco to lock into those positions and make sure that we are getting everything possible from them. So with the wing back on attack, they're going to be up here occupying this space but being that they both have shoot more often on do not be surprised if you see them cutting in to try and get shots off because if you see quadrado occupying this space demarco here thrum's going to be here martinez here akan's already going to be here barella and aslani that is seven attacking options for you right there alone and obviously with this, a Serbi will probably be up at midfield. Best Stoney right here, Devrij here, and Summer will be up further as well. So that is how you will most likely see your attack forming is just like that. And having seven options in or around the box is going to be absolutely fantastic. But now we're getting to probably the most important role within this tactic, and that is where... Hakan is playing the advanced playmaker on attack. The advanced playmaker on attack is one of the best roles to utilize this year. If you're playing a 4-2-3-1, a 5-2-1-2, anything utilizing a number 10, definitely use an advanced playmaker on attack or an attacking midfielder on attack. They're pretty good as well. Same thing with the shadow striker, but the advanced playmaker on attack is absolutely fantastic because even though it's in the name playmaker, also in the name is advanced. So they're going to get right here. They're going to get into the box. And thankfully for Hakan, not only did he have 21 overall assists, but he also had 17 goals. So they are much more than just playmakers, especially when their player is good as Hakan. And yes, you're all probably wondering, okay, well, you have two Segunda Volantes and an advanced playmaker on attack. That's three playmakers in the side. You're correct. That makes it even better. You can utilize multiple playmakers and it really, really helps you out. And now the final thing I wanna go over is the advanced forwards on attack. So we have Marcus Turum and Lotaro Martinez, two very good strikers. Personally for me, I think that that is probably gonna be one of the better striker duos in Europe this year. But also Marcus Turum and FM23, absolute machine. Same with Lotaro Martinez. So both of them in a system together where they have someone supporting them and supplying them with opportunities right behind them. And then two that will arrive later coming from deep. It's going to be amazing for them. And like I showed earlier, if you have DeMarco coming up on the wing, Quadrado coming up on the wing, Barella, Aslani arriving late, Thurman and Martinez are going to be up around goal. Hakan right around there. There is a boatload of opportunities for them to bag you goals. And if you are a side that say you have players like a Lotaro Martinez, like a Marcus Term, where they're, they have some size, even though Martinez is shorter out of the two, they're pacey, they're great finishers, and they have some decent aerial ability you are going to be having so much fun with this tactic because you're going to turn your side into a goal machine. And having all of these different outlets to make plays from to try and get the ball to Thurm or Martinez, or even as we saw Hakan, it is going to really help you throughout whatever competitions you're competing in, whether it is the league, the Champions League, or your domestic cup. Now, one thing I want to highlight from a defensive aspect is that I had it set to keep the opposition 
to the outside. Why are we wanting to keep them to the outside? Well, with opposition instructions, it'll really, really help you, and I will show you how real quick. So in your opposition instructions, with whatever tactic you may be using, this is vital to make sure that you have on. You want to have trigger press the right back or the right wing back every time. Same thing with the left back. You will show them onto their weaker foot. This takes away their width. So if they are depending on their width and if they are playmakers out wide, so say you're playing Liverpool and it's Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold, both big time playmakers out wide, even though Trent now kind of cuts inside. It is really going to limit them on what they can do and it takes a lot of creativity out of the back away. And if they have wingers, whether it be a 442 or a 443, 4231, you're going to do the exact same there. I meant to put that on the weak foot. There we go. So the reason why you're going to be showing them all on to their weaker foot is because the majority of them are only good with one foot, especially if it's your wing backs or full backs on either side. They're usually either good with their right if they're on the right side or good with their left if they're on the left side. They're very one footed. And if you are pressing them, showing them onto their weaker foot causes them to make mistakes and for you to capitalize. And then finally, on any striker, you just want to put them on their weaker foot. It'll help you a little bit. But back to what I was originally saying. Why do we want to keep them out wide? Well, we want to keep them out wide because look at how many players we have centrally. We are able to keep them out wide, especially when you have defenders as good as Barella, Bastoni, Davrish, and Acerbi. Aslani isn't really there yet, but he can definitely get there. But if you have players that are pretty good defensively and you're utilizing this 5-2-1-2, you're definitely going to want to keep the players out wide because if you're using those opposition instructions, it is going to force them into those wide areas to DeMarco, to Quadrado. They will be pressing them already, but you can have DeVridge try and close down, Aslani try and close down, Bastoni will move over, Acerbi, Barello will move over, DeMarco, and they are going to close down, press, win that ball back, encounter immediately you are gonna win multiple multiple games because of this and the last thing i want to cover is the crosses a majority of the time i always on my tactics have used low crosses this time we have whip crosses why do we have whip crosses well with the width that we are going to be getting from quadrado and demarco it's really going to help with this same thing with barella and aslani when they can deliver crosses or Hakan. What a whip cross does, it'll instruct players to deliver the balls into the box with pace, swerve, and dip in order to make it as hard as possible for defenders to deal with them. And as we've already seen, when you have as many options around the box or in the box as we do here with this 5-2-1-2, it is a no-brain thing to have on. You definitely want to be able to cause as much trouble for the opposition's defenders as possible. So having those whip crosses, definitely going to help you, especially if you have someone as prolific as Lataro Martinez in there. But now that we've gone over all that, let's go over some numbers real quick. What is the trophy hall like? What are they able to do with this? Well, they've won the league, but they also were runner-up in the Champions League, gotten to a semifinal in the Copa Italia Fanta, and they won the Coca-Cola Super Cup. But that's not the only test that I did it with. Inter Milan won the league again here. They did get knocked out early in the Champions League, but they won the Copa Italia Fanta and the Coca-Cola Super Cup. So trebles are possible. They also, like we just saw, if they're on an absolute heater, can potentially win the Champions League with this, which Inter Milan almost did against Man City this past year. And in this trouble run, Latoya Martinez had 47 goals, with Marcus Turum having 34. And you can see the assists here in this treble run, with Hakan having 17, DeMarco, wingback on attack, having 17, Quadrado, wingback on attack, having 15, Turum having 11, and Barella, one of the Volantes, having 10. But on that run where they got to the Champions League final, the roles for Thurum and Martinez were kind of reversed a little. Marcus Turum was the one with 40 plus goals. He had 45. Lotar Martinez had 33. Hakan there with the 17. And this is where Hakan also had the 21 assists. But DeMarco, once again, wing back on attack with 21. Quadrado, 14. Barella, 12. Martinez, 12. So we can see you get big time playmaking ability, big time scoring ability as well. Everyone is contributing in any way they possibly can with this 5-2-1-2. But now that we've gone over all that, let's see it in action in the match engine.
So there we have it, the 5212 boomerang. It's fun, it's exciting, it's aggressive, it's beautiful football. That is what we want from our tactics. That's what we want from our sides with NFM. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did. If you want to download the tactic, there will be a link to my Discord down below. If you wish to do so, that is where you guys will be able to download the tactic from. But until next time, everyone, have a good one. Bye-bye.